All right, hi. This is a tutorial that's going to walk you through the process of setting up a website that will allow a user to upload a photo, and then we'll use machine learning to try and predict whether that photo is of one class or another class. And in the course of this tutorial, you'll get to pick which class you want to decide between. For example, maybe you'll have a website that decides whether something is a dog or a cat. Um, for me, for this demo, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use uh, uh, the two categories of burrito and burrow to just decide whether a photo is one or the other. Now the focus of this tutorial is on trying to um, teach the process of building these things. So it's not exactly going to be a speed run. Um, so bear with me as I try and walk you through the different pieces of it. The first thing that we're going to need to do is um, build an environment where we can get all of our components to work. And for that, we're going to use Anaconda Navigator. You can get Anaconda Navigator from anaconda.com. It is a framework for managing your environment and for managing libraries for primarily the Python language. When you go to anaconda.com, you're going to want to go under their products, and you're probably going to want to choose their individual edition. This is their free open source version. When you click on it, you'll be able to go to this um, downloads uh, button here, and that's going to scroll down until you see the different operating systems that you might want to choose from. We're going to use the 64-bit graphical installer, or um, that's the um, I'm on a Mac and I'm going to use a graphical installer for all of my work. So you'll want to download that and install it and then run it. The logo should pop up and it'll take a few minutes to initialize. You'll get a splash screen with a lot of different applications that you can run. First thing that we're going to want to do, however, is to set up a new environment. So we're going to select environments and then we're going to want to update our index to make sure that our installation of Anaconda Navigator is aware of all the most recent libraries that are available on the internet and available to install. When we click Update Index, you'll see in the bottom right a progress bar begins and you'll get some information about the, how the update is going. This can take anywhere from one minute to ten minutes depending on the speed of your computer and the speed of your internet connection. We'll pause, we'll continue here until it finishes. All right, mine's complete, and now I want to create a new environment. You can see that I already have one environment called base here, and I want to create a new one just for the purposes of this tutorial. I'm going to select create down here, and I'm going to call it tutorial. And what's important about this is that I use a version of Python that's consistent with the software that we're going to use later on. And so I want to make sure that's 3.7, not 3.8. Go ahead and hit create, and Anaconda will go through the process of collecting a, a portfolio of libraries that all work together in an environment that we're going to build on in order to build our project. We'll give it a second to do that work and then we will start um, working with it. Okay, initially if you have installed selected here you'll see the packages that were installed and the primary one that um, is involved that we cared about was Python and all the other libraries that are associated, all the other packages that are here are required for Python to run. Let's work on getting our integrated development environment up and running first. And so for that, in this in particular environment, we want to install Spider. So I'm going to give it a second to uh, update itself. And I'm going to type in Spider here. And then I need to select over here, Packages. We'll select All to see what's available for Spider. You can see that Spider is available, so I'm going to select it in order to install it. And then I'm going to hit Apply. If all goes well, this is going to determine the collection of libraries that need to be added to my environment so that Spider will run. It'll take a second, it'll offer them to me, and I will accept them. Then my installation will go out to the internet, pull down the libraries required, and package them up into an environment that I can work with. We'll get Spider to work, and then we'll move on to our next step. So let's let this complete its process. Okay, it's complete. Now what I want to do is I want to go over to Home, select that, and I want to make sure that up here the environment that's chosen is Tutorial. And once I've selected that, now when I run Spider, it should launch in that particular environment. So let's give it a run and see how it works. Again, it'll take a second for Spider to launch. Okay. And it's loaded up and running. So let's um, lower, let's um, hide Anaconda Navigator for a moment. Go back to go back to um, our 
Spider implementation here, our Spider program, our integrated development environment. And we've got a new file here. And what we need to do is we need to make sure that we save this file in a place on our hard drive where we're very clear on where it is, because we're going to need to use that folder in our hard drive in order to store other files as well. So let me, let's take a second to do that. Come over here and hit the Save button. And I'm going to navigate on my computer to the location where I'm going to store my files. Now for me, that means I'm going to dig down into all of my work here. And I'm going to end up in a directory called Lecture 38. And I'm going to save it as demo1.py, uh, my first Python uh, file for this demo. I'm going to save it. And then to make sure everything's working, I'm just going to write a very simple Hello World program. Type print, Hello World. Make sure all my pieces are running OK. And then I'm going to hit the green play button up here to make sure everything works. Hit run. If everything works OK, down here on the right, you'll see Hello World showed up. So that's good. That means Spider is set up and Python is installed. And it, that much is um, good to go. So now what we want to do is we want to get a simple website up and running. And for that, we need another library. And so we're going to need to return to Anaconda Navigator in order to get access to that library. So let's shut down Spider, go back to Anaconda Navigator, and install Flask. Go back to Environments. Make sure you have your Tutorial Environment set. We'll have All here. And under our filter, we'll type in Flask. We're just looking for the, the library whose name is just Flask. We'll go ahead and hit Apply, and Anaconda will search for all of the libraries, all of the different files that are required to get Flask up and running, along with Spider, which is already there. You can see there are just a few. We'll go ahead and hit Apply, and we'll install those. OK, so far so good. Now let's go back to Home, make sure that Tutorial is selected, and we'll launch Spider again. All right, there's our original program. Let's minimize our Anaconda Navigator installation. There's our original program. Let's create a new file. And let's save this one in the same website, or in the same directory. And we'll call it demo website.py. And we're going to make sure that Flask is working. So we're going to write a little program that runs, makes a web server here. Uh, what this program does is it's going to sit on our computer. And it's going to listen for requests from our web browser to deliver information. When a request from our web browser comes in, it will deliver back the content to be displayed in the web browser. Our web browser is going to look for our server by using the special address 127.0.0.1, which means find the web server that's located on the same computer as the browser. Okay? So the file, the program that's going to return that HTML content is what we're writing now. So let's start in our file by importing the library that we need. So from the Flask library, we're going to import the Flask class with a capital F. Then let's create our application, our web application. We'll say app equals, call the constructor, and pass in the, uh, the um, system variable underscore name, which is the name of this file. And then we're going to use a decorator here. And we're going to indicate that when a website asks for the root level web content, puts a slash on the end of the URL, what we're going to deliver is the result of this function. So we'll just say, um, we'll call it hello world again. And what we'll return back is what we want displayed in the web browser. So we will return the string, hello world, this is going to, going, going to a web browser. That'll be the function that gets run when a request is made of our web server. And now let's run our web server by typing app.run. OK, let's save it, make sure everything's good. And then we're going to hit our Run button here. If all goes well, in the bottom right, you'll see some information that it is running the demo website. That's good. And that the address that you can find it at is here, HTTP 127.0.0.1 so I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to open a new web browser. And I'm going to enter that content, I'm going to enter that address into the URL bar of Chrome in this case. Any browser will work, though. And you can see that what gets displayed is coming from my program here. So that's great. That means that we've got our Flask web browser up and running. Okay, 
Let's go ahead and minimize my browser. And we're going to stop Spider and we're going to go and install our next program, which is called Kiros, which is our machine learning library. Bring back up Anaconda Navigator, go to our environment, make sure Tutorial is selected, make sure All is selected, clear our filter, and type in Kiros, K E R A S. Again, select that and hit Apply and allow Anaconda Navigator to determine the portfolio of libraries that are needed, and then we'll install it once it solves that once it solves that puzzle. There it is. Go ahead and hit apply. Give it a moment. Again, depending on the speed of your computer, this can take one minute, 10 minutes, maybe as much as 20 minutes if you've got a slow connection or um, uh, underpowered computer or low powered computer. We'll let it run its course. Okay, it's installed. So let's now go back and relaunch Spider. We're relaunching Spider to make sure that Spider is aware of the new libraries that we've installed. Should work without doing this, but it doesn't always. There's Spider. And now what we're going to do is we're going to um, work on training our machine learning program. To train our machine learning program, we're going to need some examples of images that we're interested in using as exemplars of the categories that we're interested in. So for my website, I'm going to allow my machine learning program to differentiate between pictures of burritos or pictures of burrows. So for that, I'm going to need some sample images to train on. So let me um, minimize Spider for a second and minimize Anaconda Navigator. And what we're going to do is open a file browser so you can see the structure of the environment in which we're going to be building these things. All right, you can see the two files that we have here already. What we need to do is in this folder, we need to create a new folder and we're going to call it train. And train is going to have the images that we're interested in working with. Now within train, we're going to need to create a new folder as well. And so as a subfolder within train, we're going to need a, another folder. So I'm going to open that one up. Now I'm in train and I'm going to create a folder called X and I'm going to create a folder called Y. These are my two categories of images that I'm going to create. Now you have to go out and you have to get some examples. And for this particular demo, all of your examples have to be square images, meaning they have to have the same number of pixels in the width and the same number of pixels in the height. So let me move some of these images that I already have stored into this directory so you can see what I mean. All right, so I recommend getting 20 images. You could get them from maybe Google Image Search or maybe your own personal photo collection if you're doing something that you're interested in. And in my X directory, I'm going to paste those images. These are all pictures of burritos and you can see that they're all square. So I cycle through them, all kinds of different pictures of burritos. Now a few of them, when I got them, they weren't square to begin with and so I had to put them into a photo editor and make sure that they were square when I saved them. Here's an example where I added some space above it in order to make it square. Now one thing when you make it square, you want to be very careful that you're not stretching or distorting the image. You can crop it or you can add extra space around the canvas, but if you stretch it or distort it, then your machine learning algorithm will be learning what a distorted burrito looks like, not a proper aspect ratio burrito or whatever your category is. You don't have to do burrito like I am. And in the other directory, in the Y directory, you want to put the other example that you're working with. And so for me, it's going to be burros, the Spanish name for donkey. All right, and similarly, you can see that these are a bunch of square images of burrows, in different sizes and orientations. All right. So you want your directory structure to look like this. You want your main files to be located next to the train directory, and then your train directory has to have X and Y in it in order to find, in order for Python to be able to find your different photos. Let's go back to Spider now and work on our next piece. All right, let's create a new file. And let's go ahead and save it before we do too much work. And let's just call this example.py. What we're going to do in this file is I just, I'm just going to show you what the machine learning algorithm is going to do in order to give us more examples. Typically, just having 20 examples is not really enough to have a good machine learning image recognition software. So we're going to try and um, extend the number of examples we have by manipulating the photos that you've got to create additional examples. All right, so I want to show you what that's going to look like. So here's a quick. Uh, program that we're going to write that's going to show you how our machine learning algorithm is going to create more examples. 
So we want to import from our Kiros library our preprocessing uh, from preprocessing, and we want image. We are going to import image data generator, and we're going to import array oop, to image. Great, and we're going to import image to array, and we're going to import load image IMJ G. We're going to name our two classes, so we're going to have a variable called X, and we'll we'll assign that the name burrito, and we'll have a variable called Y, and we'll assign that burrow. But you can use your labels instead, and then we're going to pick out one particular sample image that we're going to work with. So sample Y image, and this is where your directory structure is important. If it follows, if you followed the way that I built my directory structure, you will be able to find your file at train.x or y, whatever you want. We'll say y since that's what we're calling our variable. You need to pick one of the images that is in your directory and give it the correct name with the extension on it as well. And we're going to use that to load it up and we're going to uh, distort it. All right, so we're going to um, create a function. A comment, create a function that will tweak, tweak our images to prevent what we call overfitting. We're going to create a data generator. That's going to be our variable. And we're going to call the constructor for image data generator. I'm going to pass it a bunch of different variables. For starters, we're going to pass it a rotation range. This is going to generate a bunch of images from our um, base image. We'll say up to 40 degrees. And we'll say width shift range, and we'll set that equal to 0 0.2. And we'll set our height, height, spell it right, height shift range, set that equal to 0 0.2. And we'll set rescale equal to uh, 1.0, make sure it's a floating point, divided by 255. And we'll set our shear range, which is going to be how much it's going to shift left to right, set that equal to 0 0.2. And we'll set our zoom range equal to 0 0.2. And we'll set a horizontal flip equal to true. We'll allow it to be horizontally flipped. And we'll use our fill mode. Fill mode we'll set it equal to uh, nearest. So if we shift off the side of our canvas, what are we going to fill the empty pixels with? All right, then we're going to go ahead and load our image. So IMG equals load image, and we'll give it the sample Y image file name that we picked above. We'll create an array from that. Image to array, give it the image that we had we created just above that. And then we will make sure that that is a square image. So this is why if, if your original image isn't square, this is the point at which it gets distorted, which is, which, which is what you don't want to have happen. But just to make sure it's square, we're going to reshape it. All right, so it um, gives it the right shape in our NumPy library. And then we're going to go ahead and create a bunch of these images. All right, so we'll say i equals 0. And then for batch in data gen dot flow. So we're going to, this is going to be iterate over uh, a stream here. We'll take x. And we want a batch size of 1. And we want to save it to a directory that will set equal to preview. And we're going to have to make that directory to make sure nothing breaks. And then we'll save with a prefix. We'll say yes to that. And we'll save format. We'll save it as a JPEG with an E image. Great. And then uh, indent one. And we'll say i equals i plus i plus equals 1 plus equals 1. And then if i is greater than 20, we'll just make 20. Then we'll stop because this is just for an example. All right, so if all goes well, this will do its job. Let's go back to our file explorer and let's make sure that we add a new folder that's a sibling to train called preview so that we have a place to put these. And then we'll come over here to spider installation, our spider. We'll save the file that we just created. And if we run it, 
and we don't have any errors, save error. What did I do wrong here? Save format equals JPEG. Oh, this should have a colon at the end of it. Let's try that again. Save and run. Churning away. You can see, so see that it's still running because the red X is here. Got a bunch of um, warnings, but not a problem. And then it says, note name load image is not defined. So did I have a typo up here? I have a typo here. This shouldn't be, this should not have the full words, just IMG. Save it again, run it again. We're running. Okay, so it looks like I need to install one more library. And so let's go and install that. That, I believe, is the pillow library that we need to install. So let's go tackle that. So I'm going to close Spider. And I'm going to minimize my window here. I'm going to go to Anaconda Navigator. I'm going to go under my environments. I'm going to make sure tutorial is selected. I'm going to select pillow. Great. That'll help me to load an image. I'll select it. I'll apply it. I'll uh, Anaconda Navigator to figure out the portfolio of libraries that need are needed to, so that pillow can do its work. We'll let this run its course. We'll go ahead and apply that and install all the libraries that are required and download them as necessary. Okay, looks like it installed okay. Now I'll go back to home, make sure tutorial is selected, relaunch Spider. Great, I'll minimize Anaconda Navigator and bring up my file explorer again. Same file I had before, it's all saved. I'm gonna go ahead and run it. Over on the right, you can see it's running because we have the red dot. It's running much more cleanly because the library was installed. And now if I come over to my file explorer, you can see that preview has been filled with a bunch of files that weren't there before. Now my sample Y image here was Burrow 10, my train Y Burrow 10. So if I go to train Y Burrow 10 and I look at that, you can see that's my base image of a burrow. Now you can see what this software did is it went through and it created a bunch of modifications of that image. It stretched it, it moved it, it slide, slid it, it sheared it, it rotated it. And basically what it's doing is creating a bunch, a bunch of other images of burrows along, the, along with my original one. And that's going to effectively increase the number of training examples that I have. All right, so let me close this up. All right, so example.py was just to show you how the machine learning is going to create new images to train from. Okay, so now we're going to do the part where we train the machine learning. When a user opens the web browser and uploads a file that it wants the machine learning to discriminate between burrow or burrito, the Python web server is going to have to ask the machine learning whether or not it's a burrow or a burrito. In order to get an answer back, in order to get a prediction about which category that image is, first we have to have a model. That model is like a brain. And that brain is trained on the different source images that we're given it, that we have come up with, that we put in the X and Y directory. And so what we need to do now is we need to write a program that will train the brain. Now this is a little bit elaborate, but we can go ahead and do it. And we'll do it step by step, and I'll try and walk us through the process of how this works. All right, so if we go over here to Spider, we're going to create a new folder. And I'm going to save it. And I'm going to save it in the same directory at the same level and call it trainthebrain.py. And we're going to need to um, import some of our libraries in order for this to work. So let's see if we can get that set up for starters. All right, so the first thing we want to do is to import the libraries we need. All right, so what are we going to need? We're going to need uh, a bunch of different specifics for our model. So from Keras Models, we're going to import the sequential model. That's the kind of neural network we're creating. And we're going to add some layers to that. And so for that, we're going to import a two-dimensional convolutional neural network layer. We're going to import an activation layer. Activation layer. We're going to import a pooling layer. We're going to import a flatten layer. We're going to import a dense layer. I'm going to import a dropout layer. And then uh, we are going to need the TensorFlow library. So import TensorFlow as TF. And we're going to need um, uh, we're going to need one more 
uh, bit from TensorFlow. From, so from TensorFlow, TensorFlow.Kiros, import back and as k. So we'll use k. All right, so those are the libraries that we need. Now we need to set up some variables that will help us to find our different pieces of, uh, find our training examples, for example. So let's set up our uh, directory. So we'll call our train data directory, and we'll set that equal to train, which is the name of the folder where our images are. We'll set up a validation directory, and we'll have to create that. So validation data directory, that's needed for our machine learning as it's building the brain, as it's building the model. How many examples are we going to have? So how many uh, examples? We'll say nb train, train samples, and that's going to be equal to 20 because that's how many we've got. Um, and then we'll have how many validation examples are we going to have? We're going to validate on the same examples that we train on, so we'll set that equal to 20. And then how long are we going to train the model for? Let's go ahead and set it equal to 50 epochs. So we'll have it run a cycle of 50 times. And we'll work on batches of five images at a time as we do that. Equal five. Okay, so those are the additional, those are the constants we're going to need. So now let's go back to our file hierarchy. That's not our file hierarchy. That's not what I want. I want our window. Do I not have it here? Okay, pause for a sec. Okay, so now let's go to our file explorer and create that validation directory. So we have our train directory that has all of our training files in it. Let's go ahead and copy that and we want to copy it to a folder called validation. So it'll be called train, on my computer it's called train copy by default, and I want to make it say validation. And it should have the same things that our X and Y directory has in it. All right, so that'll set us up there. That's good. Okay, and let's see. So now let's go down and let's start with the logic of our program, and we'll go to the very bottom. We're going to have a main function that launches, launches our whole training process from. Not defined, so let's go ahead and define that. And in our main function, what we're going to want to do is a couple different things. We're going to create a model, so we'll just set uh, create a variable. It's initially equal to none here. We'll fix that in a second. We're going to do some housekeeping to make sure that everything gets loaded cleanly and saved cleanly. So we're going to do um, tf tensorflow.curious.backend.clear session. Great. And then we're going to do just a garbage collection. Uh, I think, did I forget to put garbage collection at the top? Oh yeah, okay, so we're gonna need, we're gonna need to go up to the top, I forgot to import a couple libraries. So we're gonna need to um, import our garbage collector, and we're going to need to import our image data generator as well from what we demonstrated before. So from images image, import, image, data generator. Okay, let's try that. All right, now we should have our garbage collection should work okay. Great. And what do we want to do after that? Well, we want to train our model. So we'll say my model will be the result of building the model, which we have to define. And then we want to uh, train the model. So we'll say train our model. And we'll pass it the built model and get back the trained model. And then finally, we want to save our model so that our Flask program can use it. All right, make sure that's lowercase. All right, so those are the high-level pieces that we need. So let's talk about how we're going to build our model now. So let's create our build model function. And this is going to have several different layers that we're going to use. So for starters, um, uh, we're going to need to make sure that our images are in the right shape. And so we're going, I'm going to add some code here. So our back end, we're going to look at our image data format. And depending on which image, which format our images are in, we're going to set up our shape according to how our files are stored. Um, and then we're going to build our model. So our first layer is going to be a two-dimensional convolutional neural network. 
So we'll create our initial model. This is sequential, and then we'll add layers to it. So we're going to add a convolutional 2D layer, an activation layer, and a pooling layer. And then on top of that, we're going to add a second convolutional neural network that takes the input size of the output of the previous layer. And then we'll add a third one here. Oh, my firewall is going off there. Okay, and then we will flatten it out and we'll get our final result by adding the flatten, dense, activation, dropout, dense, activation, sigmoid. Finally, we'll take all of those layers and we'll compile it with a loss function. And all of these things are things that you can tweak if you're interested, but we'll just take some as a um, beginning point. And then finally, we'll return that model. All right, so that's the model that we're going to build. That's here. Now let's go ahead and train our model. So we'll create our trainer model. And we're, for this, we're going to need to do that work that we showed before, where we're going to um, take all of our images that we have and create some additional uh, training examples. All right, so we're going to create a data generator that rescales and shears and zooms and flips like before. And then we are going to um, use one that's for data generation. That's for training. And then for testing, we'll use one that's slightly different. Okay. And then we'll create our image, uh, our flow, by taking our training generator, providing the directory where our images are, giving it a size and a width that we care about, which should be 150. Do, do I have that up here? Oh, I need to add that as another constant up here as well. Forgot to add that. So up here, I need to say image uh, width and image height I'm going to equal 150 and 150. So we'll work with images of size 150. Okay. So that then down here, when we set the target size, that will work. Our batch size is set up. So we're so far so good. All right. We're gonna um, train with that stream, and we will validate with a similar stream right and then finally we will work on fitting our model and finally we're going to return the model that we have made all right so that will train our model we'll set all the parameters that we need um, and what went wrong there why am i getting this little error. Let's save it and see what happens. Oh, one too many over, I think. There we go. Great. All right, so that's building our model. Is that right? What do I do? I think my indentations are off. Well, let's keep going and we'll come back to that in a second. So that's training our model. And then the last thing that we need to do is we need to save our model. This is where we're going to store our brain on disk. All right. And so to save it, we're going to need, we'll go ahead and make our prediction function. Actually, I don't think we need to do that. We'll just go ahead and do model.save and we'll give it the name that we care about. Saved model.h5. Great, and that should save it. We're going to give it that hard-coded name. All right, save everything. I'm still getting some errors. What's here? Undefined name model. Oh, train model here should take a model as an input. There we go. That's the incoming parameter. What else we get here? NB validation samples. Did I spell it wrong up here? NB validation samples. There we go. 
All right, and then what do we have going on here? Undefined, let's say a capital M, so we'll use a lowercase m. And did I call it build model up here? Get my names right, build model. All right, so it looks like everything is working okay. And so now we're ready to try to create our model. So if we run this, we need to make sure our files are in our training directory and our files are in our validation directory. Let's go ahead and bring up our file explorer. And what we want to see show up is our H5 file, which is the brain. So let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. It's running over here on the left, get some feedback. Looks good. You can see that it's training and going through 50 different training cycles, trying to do as good as it possibly can. We'll let that run its course. All right, it's done. And you can see over here that our saved model showed up. So that's great. So far, so good. So we went ahead and we created a model that we can use in our website. Perfect. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to build the proper website. We don't just want a demo website. We want a website that's going to show some interesting content to the user and then do that training for us. All right. So to get that going, we're going to need not our demo website, but we're going to need our proper website. So let's create our new file. And let's go ahead and save it. And let's save it as website, oops, as website.py. All right, you can see that shows up over here. So far, so good. And for our website, we're going to need one additional folder. We're going to need a folder called static. And in our static folder, we're just going to have images that we need to present as part of our website. So in our static folder, we want an example of each one of each of our training, exam, uh, training images so that we can use that as we present to our user of what we're deciding between. So I'm going to go ahead and take um, the burrito one picture and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put it in my static directory. And I'm going to take my burrow one picture, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put it in my static directory. And then I'm going to rename it so that it doesn't have, it's just not, so it doesn't say one, it's just burrow.jpg and burrito.jpg. And those are going to be part of my website rather than part of my machine learning. All right. Great. There's website. We've got train, we got static, we got preview and validation, all set, good to go. Let me minimize that. Now let's walk through the different pieces of our website. All right, so for starters, we're going to want to put the two categories that we're interested in and the location of our static images that we just created. So my two categories are going to be burrito and burrow. We're going to store them as a variable called x and y. And then we're going to put the two file names of where our images are for our website. We're going to need a couple other constants. We're going to need to know where we're keeping those, generally where we're keeping our uploads. That went, so when um, users of our website upload an image, we need to store it somewhere so our brain can access it and, and discriminate, uh, discriminate which it category it is. So we'll create a directory called static uploads. That doesn't exist, so let's go back to our file browser and in our static directory, let's create a new fol folder called uploads. Make sure you're getting all your capitalizations right because the capitalizations matter, at least in, on my system they do. All right, let's make that go away. So our upload folder is static uploads, great. The different, these are the different kinds of files, extensions, we're gonna allow our user to upload, so we'll put that in there. Um, then we want to import a bunch of libraries. So the libraries that we're going to want to import. We're going to want to import the operating system library, uh, various components of Flask. We're going to use something for a secure file name. We're going to import a math library. We're going to import some components from our machine learning libraries as well. All right, we're going to go ahead and create our website object that like we did in our sample website right there, we'll call it Flask. And then down at the um, down where we launch everything, we're going to um, launch it down at the bottom. We're going to need to add some other methods, but we're going to launch everything from our main function. 
And just to help our website look good, we're going to keep a running list of all the results that people have entered in. We'll create a list that will put those in. All right, we don't have a main function, so let's go ahead and create that main function and walk through the different components of it. All right, so our main function is going to load the model from a file. This is a function that we have to define. It's going to load that H5 file. We're going to get a couple of different components that we're going to load up from our, uh, from our file. We need to do some things with Flask in order for this website to work. So we need to set this secret key dictionary to anything you want. Super secret, secret key is fine. It just has to be something. We're going to pass in our session, our model, and our graph, various components of the brain in this dictionary as session, model, and graph. We're going to tell the Flask application where to put the uploads by putting it in the upload folder. And how big, what's the biggest file that will allow someone to upload? And it'll be 16 megabytes. And then finally, the last thing our main function will do will be to run our application or run our website. So now we need to fill in how we're going to load our model from our file. All right, so we, we saved it in Train the Brain. We saved it. So let's go ahead and show how we're going to load it. We're going to load our model from file by creating a session for our machine learning, setting it equal to the, set our session equal to the one we've got. We're going to load our model from disk, and so that's got to be stored in your directory in order to get it. We're going to create the um, neural network from that, and then we're just going to return it. So that just loads it up. Come back to, down here, we load our model from our file, and we store it, and everything's, everything's good to go. So that's enough to load our file and to run a website. But our website, if a browser requests content from our website, there's nothing here for our website to do. So we're going to have to ask our website to return something when our browser hits our website. So let's start by looking at the basic uh, top level page. All right, we'll annotate our application. Our slash means the top level of our URL when we get it. And this will be our initial web page load. And we're going to get a couple things here. So we have a couple different ways in which people can access this website. They'll either get it the normal way or they'll access it after they upload a file. So we need a bunch of conditions here that I'm going to bring in. All right, if it's the first initial web page that we're going to get that they're asking for, they just come to our website, we're going to give them another file that we're going to have to look at in a second. We're going to load another file and we're going to fill in a bunch of variables for them and we'll just have that website load. But if it's a result of hitting the upload button on our website, we'll check to make sure that there is a file that's attached to it. Um, if there is a file, we'll make sure that there's a file name associated with it. We'll make sure that it is a safe file name according to our allowed extensions. And then finally, if everything goes okay, we'll go ahead and we'll upload our we'll upload our the user's file to our upload folder, and then we'll run our discriminator. We'll run our brain program to decide what it is. All right, what does that look like? Okay. Well, we need to bring that in. All right. So if after we've uploaded our file. We're going to pass in the file name that the user uploaded and we're going to ask our machine learning to do its work. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get that image that was uploaded. So we'll put it in the test image variable. We'll pull it off of our we'll pull it off of our um, out of our folder. We'll turn it into uh, a, an array that we can work with for our machine learning. We will load up our model by pulling out of our app the different variables associated with our model that we set down in main. And then we'll do some work here. Let's show you what we're going to do. All right. We'll set this graph as our default. We'll set our session according to what our session is. And this is where we make our prediction. Right here is where we ask our model to look at our test image and say what you think it's going to be. Result ends up being a number, a number between 0 and 1. And if it's a 0, then we think it's category X. And if it's a 1, we think it's category Y. And so we'll say if it's anything less than 0.5, we'll say the model is guessing it's an X. And if it's anything greater than or equal to 0.5, we'll say it's a Y. All right, so what do we do? We predict what it's going to be. And then we are going to send back to our website the result. So if the result is an X, 
then we're going to send some HTML back that indicates that that is what it that's what our guess is. We're going to send it back the location of the image, some formatting, what our guess is, and what we thought the what the level of the guess was, and then some bootstrap formatting as well. And if it's a Y, we'll do the second one. We'll throw that on our running results, and then we'll have the browser render our index.html page with the appropriate answers in there as well. All right, so let's see what else do we need in order for this to work. Let's go deal with our problems here. It says, okay, uh, there's no function called allowed file. Right, that's a function we need to um, add to make sure that nothing malicious gets uploaded. And so let's go up here and let's write a function called allowed file. And this will return true if it is an allowed file. All right, that's solved. So that's great. So I think that's everything we need in our web browser. Looks like we have no errors. We're all set. And so now the last thing that we need to do is we need to put our template in. And so our template file is going to be, we'll call it, save it as index.html. Um, and did we say we were going to put that in a, where did we say index.html was going to be? Render template. Okay, so we're going to need a template directory as well. So let's go back to our file hierarchy here. And let's create a new folder called templates. Let's go back to Python, close our index file actually. You can see that it's saved here. We want to move that into our templates directory. All right now we can lower this, go back to spider, let's open up that template. All right, it's an empty file and we want to put some HTML in there. Now I don't have, let's see, I can walk through the different components of this. Let's do that. All right, so let's start with the head of the document. All right, so we'll start with the standard HTML opening. So that defines it as being HTML5 declared the HTML tag that it's English, and then our head section. This is where we set up the bootstrap library that makes it look halfway decent. And this is where we load the bootstrap library. And here is where we set the title of the web page that'll show up in the browser. And you can see we're using Jinja, which is the template language. And this text right here is gonna be replaced by what we passed in in our render here. So you can see we render our template index.html and my x is going to be equal to x, which was set here, burrito. And so here, my x will be replaced by burrito. So that's the, that's the head. Then in the body, we're going, to want some, uh, we're going to want some stuff here as well. So let's put that there and start with this. All right, so the body, right now, if we were to do this, this would do, show nothing in it, but it would load up some um, JavaScript, some jQuery, and the other things for Bootstrap that we need. So let's create our first row of our website. We'll create, uh, we'll create a container image. A, uh, sorry, we'll create a container um, div. That's just invisible, but it's an organizing uh, division and then a row within that container, and then a column within that, and it will say welcome to, and then in the next row, we'll put those, we'll put the picture, our static picture of our burrito and our burrow. So in our next row, we will say one column, there's a picture of our sample X, whatever we had in our Python code, say my X, then the second one will say or, and then a third one will say my Y, Okay, and if we stop there, let's put a line there, and let's close out our container. If we save that and we run our website, we should be able to see the basics of what we've got now. Let's hit our green run, start our container, it's running, load up our model, great, and our website is running. Let's go ahead and bring up our browser. Let's refresh it. 
And now you can see we get welcome to burrito or burro. So far, so good. All right, that's perfect. Now we need to add the part where we can upload an image to detect. So let's lower that. Let's stop our website from running here with the red X. And let's go back to our index file and add the component where we're going to upload. So for this, what we're going to add is we're going to add a form. We're going to put it after the HR but before the final uh, closing div. We'll add another row. And in that first column, we'll say upload a new file. And we'll put a form where we can upload our image. And it'll be a file name. Let's make sure that's all lined up. Great, an upload button, the end of our form, the end of our column, and then the end of our row. It's right there. Okay. All right. So if we run that, let's see, save everything. And we come here, go to our website, and we hit run. Bring that back up, and we hit run. Now we have an upload button. Great. So lower that. Let's stop our website from running. Go back to our index. And now let's put the location where we can put our answers. So this is going to have some template text. So for starters, if there's any errors, we want a place to show our errors. So we'll put our errors in here. So here's where we use some of our template language. This will go through any errors that we get. And if we have any errors, then it will show them with the button to clear them. All right, hopefully we're not going to have any errors. That would be like if someone tried to upload uh, a non-existent file or they didn't specify a file and they just hit upload first. Um, and then we will put another line, horizontal line. And then finally, we will put the answers that we get back. All right. And we'll go through each one of the results that we have back. Put the results in there. And that'll be the end. And then that's the end of our row all right I think I think that's everything so if we save it all and we go back to our website and we run it running clean let's bring up our website make it a little wider let's refresh it all right and now we choose a file uh, let's get a picture of a burrow burrow six we open it, we upload it, and our machine learning guesses that it's a burrow. Pretty good. So far, so good. Now let's try a burrito. Let's choose a file, go to our training, go to X, let's pick up burrito 8. Let's upload it. Pretty good. Guesses it's a burrito. So far, so good. Okay, so it's not going to get all of them right. It doesn't get 100% accuracy. Uh, sometimes the burrows will get miscalculated. Mis classified or the burritos will get misclassified, but so far so good. Let's go back to one of our burrows. Let's get burrow one. There you go. So that, it guessed that that burrow was actually a burrito. So it got that one wrong. Got this one right, got this one right. But it does pretty good. I mean, we're giving it examples that it explicitly saw, so you'd hope it would do okay. Eh, got that one wrong. Got that one right, great. And so then you can do funny things like you can put something that's not a burrow or a burrito and ask it to figure out what it is. So it thinks I'm more of a burrito than a burrow. Okay, so that was a walkthrough of how you can build a machine learning website using Kiros and TensorFlow and Flask on top of the Python language. Thank you for your attention.